Um, ano lang po, maybe maybe an additional item po ano. Um, uh, there is a pending case po sa NTC uh, against sa uh, ABS-CBN uh, dahil po may violations ang ABS-CBN sa amin noon pong um, 2020 uh, kung saan po ay uh, nag, gumag, nag nag ano po sila nag uh, pay-per-view without authority from the commission. So yun po ang isang violation na kailangan po muna namin matapos bago po kami makapagbigay ng clearance. Yan po ay isang kaso na pending po sa amin. Uh, yun po your honors. If if you if the honorable committee wants, we can also submit a copy of that uh, pending case before our office. Mr. Chair. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, honorable Mark Correa. Mr. Chair, may I ask the honorable uh, chairman of the NTC if uh, the other violations established during the hearing of the renewal of franchise of ABS-CBN are not considered violations because he only mentioned the violations in connection with the pay-per-view committed by ABS-CBN for the lack of authority of what we call the conditional access system. Did he not consider also the violations like uh, the lack of permit of the uh, uh, the encryptment of the content and the encryption of the signal is also a violation and it ran for it lasted for several years not only weeks and days mr chair uh, it has no permit for the digital broadcast of uh, its 11 channels mr uh, mr chair also ABS-CBN violated the cease and desist order. It also sold millions of uh, black boxes throughout the, the land because uh, without which the encrypted content cannot be viewed by our people. That is why that is the reason why they violated their free-to-air uh, contracts. This, these violations, uh, Mr. Chair, that's why I'm asking the Honorable Chairman because he should have included them in all the in, in the context of violations uh, as per the provision of the public service act which is uh, which is two which is 200 pesos per day per violation mr chair as a matter of fact i remember telling the ntc chairman if he has already computed all the violations established during the hearing. And uh, I was told initially that the, by, the, the amount of the violation, Mr. Mr. Chair, is insignificant. Of course, I beg to disagree with him because I made a, a computation, a detailed computation of all these uh, detailed violations. And I came up with trillion peso violation, uh, Mr. Chair. So. If he's talking only of the pay-per-view violations, I don't think that is complete. May I ask the comment of the NTC uh, Commissioner, Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I respond? Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, yung po mga binanggit na violations po ni uh, Congressman Marcoleta, we will look into it uh, per, per detail po yun, ano, kasi po, uh, we cannot say that it's a violation right now or hindi. Depende po yan dun sa magiging labas po ng uh, aming uh, investigation kasi po kakaroon po yan ng notice and hearing po sa, sa concerned na corporation. Mr. Cordoba, sinabi ko naman sa iyo noon na uh, umpisahan mo ng uh, usisain at investigahan. Matagal na yun eh. 2020 pa yun. Dalawang taon ang nakakaraan. Uh, bakit naman hindi mo kasi sinimulan? Actually, Ang pagkakaalam ko dyan, alam nyo rin na walang... You will, you will admit that uh, uh, there is no permit uh, dun sa encryption ng signal. Wala rin permit dun sa encryption ng mga contents. Hindi ba tama yun, uh, Mr. NTC? Uh, Actually, sir. Uh, yeah. Opo, yun pong, yun, pong, uh, yun pong case na final sa amin ay tungkol po doon, sir. Yun po yung uh, encryption po. At mo to prove you, you can investigate already because that is the reason why the franchise was not reduced in the first place. Wala siyang permit po digital broadcast. At ito hindi lang days, hindi, hindi weeks, hindi months. It lasted for uh, several uh, years, uh, Mr. Chair. At nakita mo rin yung uh, when they migrated from analog to digital uh, uh, contents. 
Hindi ba nagkaroon sila ng demonstration, uh, uh, Mr. Commissioner? At you only allowed them for three months. But the demonstration continued for years. And these are also violations. So I, I'm not still mentioning their, uh, the, the violations about uh, the, P, the, the PDRs, which is supposed to be the jurisdiction of the Securities, the Securities and Exchange Commission, mm -hmm. as well as the uh, tax evasion uh, schemes that they have uh, employed, Mr. Chairs. Dahil nangako pa ang BIR dito, these are all obligations that the NTC should have investigated in the first place. Kahit naman, uh, kahit naman siguro walang magdemanda o magasunto sa inyong opisina, Mr. Chairman, moto propyo kasi kasama kayo nung inimbestigahan natin yan. At ito ay public knowledge. At ang katotohanan nito, yung binabanggit po ninyong memorandum, uh, Mr. Chair, Hindi lang national, meron, meron din po silang local obligation. Sa Quezon City lamang po, you will be surprised, Mr. Chair, na yung pong assessment ng kanilang building at saka nilang machineries and equipment, broadcast equipment, alam po ba ninyo yung assessment period nila? E na, 40 years pa po ang, 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 uh, ang basis ng assessment nila. Eh. 1973 pa po yung iba, ang pinaka-latest, 2004. Meaning to say, Hindi po na assess yung mga build yung building nila at saka yung improvement sa loob, mga equipment, uh, lahat ng ginagamit nila. In other words, yung basis po ng assessment mali na po eh because hindi bumibili naman po sila ng makabagong equipment eh because of the technology na mabilis pong lumaki ngayon. Hindi po napupuntahan ng assessment ng assessor office yung uh, mismong opisina ng ABS-CBN. Kahit na po yung building official, kailangan po siguro patawag natin sila. Hindi sila pinapapapasok doon sa mismong uh, planta o istasyon ng abs -CBN. Kaya hindi po ma-assess yung equipment, yung mga makinarya nila dyan na binibili nila every year. Ang assessment po ay 1973 pa po. Paano natin makukuha ang tamang buwis kapag hindi nila pinapapasok ang assessor sa kanilang opisina? Pati po yung uh, pinakamatas na transmitter, kailangan po malaman ninyo, Mr. NTC Commissioner, yung pong, yung pong uh, transmitter ng ABS-CBN, wala pong building permit yun. Paano po nangyari yan? Ito po lahat obligation. Eh. Kaya nga po yung ang sinasabi natin dito, kaya kailangan ba payagan natin sa kagad na makasakay sa ibang prangkisa nang hindi po nasesettle itong napakaraming mga sagutin na ito? at obligation na taong bayan na po ang nakakaalam nung tayo po ay nagkaroon ng malawak ang public hearing dito. Hindi po dapat ganun lang. Kailangan pong masettle muna ito. Bakit hindi muna po nila kasi isettle, ayusin, bayaran ng dapat bayaran? Hindi yung makikisakay ka na lang na parang business as usual na lang, Mr. Chair. Ito po yung aking uh, ito po yung board ng aking ano, ng aking privilege speech. At kung sinasabi po nila, Mr. Chair, na hindi po merger ito, hindi po acquisition, ito po circumvention lamang eh, Mr. Chair. Eh. Alam po ba ninyo, yung IRR po ng Republic Act 10667, ito po yung Philippine Competition Commission, under Rule 2, Letter K, ang sinasabi po niya sa merger, merger refers to the joining of two or more entities or to form a new entity including joint ventures. Alam po ninyo, for purposes of assessing whether or not there is competition, pinalawak po ng IRR ng Philippine Competition ang definition ng merger para hindi po tayo maging technical lang, para walang makapagsircumvent ng batas. Ang nagsasabi pa po ng iba, hindi naman po acquisition yan, sabi niya. Kaya hindi, hindi na dapat magpaalam sa Philippine Competition. Hindi po totoo yun. Alam po ninyo, Mr. Chair, it is not only acquisition that will entail control over an entity because ang uh, kahit na po and nandito po sa section uh, sa section 25 po ng Philippine Commission Competition Commission sinasabi po rito Mr. Chair in determining the control of an entity the commission may consider the following kung pupunta po tayo sa last sentence noon 
at idudugtong natin sa letter F, ganito po yung sinasabi. Control exists even when the entity owns one half or less of the, of the voting power of another entity when, this, when there exist rights or contracts which confer decisive influence on decisions of the entity. Ang totoo po, doon sa Philippine Competition Commission Act, Mr. Chair, nasa section 4, dinefine din ang control. Ganon din po, sabi niya, sa letter F, control refers to the ability to substantially influence or direct the action or decision of an entity, whether by contract, agency, or otherwise. Yun po bang pagkakabili ng substantial stocks ng ABS-CBN at ng, ng TB5? Hindi po ba nagbibigay ng substantial control yun sapagkat ayon sa deal nila, Mr. Chair, ang ABS-CBN na po ang gagawa ng content, wala na pong gagawing content ang TB5 at ang TB5 magbo-broadcast na lang. Bakit po? Bakit po nagaganon? Parang mababiolate po yung Section 10 ng TB5 sapagkat yung rights and privileges na nakuha po dahil nakakuha na siya ng control, hindi po nila ipinagpaalam. Nasa Section 10 po yan, Mr. Chair. At yung word na merge dun sa Section 10 po, it was used in its generic sense, Mr. Chair. Hindi lang mo pinag-uusapan yung technicality ng talagang merger or acquisition. Ang sabi po sa definition na ginawa ng Philippine Commission, kahit na po joint venture, pagka-control ang nangingibabaw, eh, nan, ay kailangan po rin ano, ay makikita rin po natin na control din po yan. At saka kaya ko po sinasabi na kinakailangan makialam ang Philippine Commission, uh, Competition Commission, dahil hindi lamang po doon sa amount ng investment ang pinag-uusapan, Mr. Chair. Bakit po? Dahil po kasi sa Section 14 ng Philippine Competition Commission, kailangan pong tingnan ng PCC yung anti-competitive agreements. Nasa Section 14 po yan. Mandate, na po, mandate po niya yan. Kailangan din po niyang makita kung merong abuse of dominant position nasa Section 15. Ito pong dalawang uh, sections na to, Mr. Chair, kapag hindi po tinignan ng Philippine Competition Commission, ito pong dalawang ito have the object or effect of substantially preventing, restricting, or lessening competition. Yun po yung, yun po yung gusto nating tingnan. Yung po bang pagkakaroon ng control will have the effect of preventing, restricting, or even lessening competition. Ito po ay alang-alang sa interest ng consumers, Mr. Chair, kaya hindi po malit na bagay na akala mo bigla na lang sasakay po sa isang uh, may-ari ng prangkisa, kakalimutan lahat ang obligation, hindi na natin titingnan kung yung pagsanib ng dalawang yun, eh, makikita mo yung control at ang yung control mawala na, magkakaroon na po ng monopolya at ang madidisgrasya rito yung interest ng ating mga consumers. Ang dito lamang po, Mr. Chair. Salamat po. Including, of course, their respective no, chairperson. Antay lang, sabi niya. <laughs> Philippine Competition Commission uh, focuses on the impact on competition and consumer welfare of the transaction. So it is really with regard to the acquisition of shares by ABS-CBN in TV5 that the mandate of the Competition Commission is focused on. Now, we submitted a position paper earlier, I believe yesterday, to the uh, Honorable Chair and the Secretariats, and I hope that that will be circulated as well to all the members of the committees here in present. Uh, we also have had no ample opportunity to look at the details of the transaction primarily because up till now, ABS-CBN and TV5 have not notified the commission of their transaction. Under the law and under our rules, they do have 30 days within which to notify us if the transaction happens to be a notifiable transaction, meaning that it meets the thresholds 
provided for in the law, the IRR, and other relevant legislation. So we have two issues before us as far as the commission is concerned. First is whether the transaction is notifiable under the law and our, under our rules. And secondly, regardless of whether it is notifiable, and I will explain the reasons for this uh, broad uh, concept later, regardless of whether it is notifiable, whether the transaction is likely to result in a substantial lessening of competition that we can review and thereafter prohibit or subject to conditions. So if you will allow me, Mr. Chair, I'd like to discuss the first issue, which is the notifiability of the transaction. Unlike the SEC, we do not have a copy of the investment agreement and the other related documents. What we have are publicly available information, which have already been articulated before the committees. Based on these publicly available information, it appears to be that the transaction is not notifiable. It does not meet the transaction value under the Bayanihan to recover as one act or Bayanihan two. If you will recall under this law, Congress required the PCC for a period of two years or until September 15 or thereabouts 2022 to review only mergers or acquisitions with a transaction value of more than 50 billion pesos. This means that either of the parties must have assets or revenues in the preceding year of more than 50 billion. This is what we refer to as the size of party test. And secondly, that generally because this transaction is a transaction within the Philippines, that the entity to be acquired must have assets or revenues in excess as well of 50 billion pesos. This is known as the size of transaction test. Now, additionally, the requirement under the PCA where the transaction involves an acquisition of shares remains applicable. And that is that is that the transaction must result in more than 35% of the voting shares being transferred to the acquiring entity. So with regard to the present transaction, in so far as the size of party test, the aggregate value of the Lopez Group assets in the Philippines amounts to approximately 456 billion pesos, which is in excess of the 50 billion threshold under the Bayanihan to recover as one act. Meanwhile, PLDT's aggregate value of assets in the Philippines amounts to 525 billion pesos, more or less. And therefore, the size of party test is met. With regard to the second test, the size of transaction, TV5's value of assets in the Philippines only amounts to 7 billion pesos, which is below the 50 billion peso threshold. And as the SEC mentioned earlier, their revenues in the past three years have been in the red, meaning that their uh, revenues have been in the form of losses and these range from 2.5 billion pesos to 1.2 billion pesos in the last three years. Now, in the same vein, the transaction also relates only to acquisition of shares that would result in ownership of 34.99% of voting shares, and therefore not meeting the requirement of the acquisition of at least 35% of the voting shares in order to qualify under this size of transaction test. And therefore, under this second test, it appears that the transaction is not notifiable. Now, even if it is not notifiable, because it does not meet the thresholds provided under the law and under our IRR and under Bayanihan to recover as one act, it does not preclude the parties from voluntarily notifying the PCC under section 3.2 of the PCC rules on merger procedure within 30 days from the execution of their investment agreement. 
the commission in its discretion may give due course to such voluntary notifications subject to the review period of a total of 135 days, 45 days for phase one. And if there is an indication of a substantial uh, restriction on competition, which necessitates a deeper analysis, we can have another 90 days for a phase two review. Now, suppose the parties do not voluntarily notify the commission. Can the PCC conduct a review of the transaction on its own initiative or moto proprio? The answer is yes. Section 16 of the Philippine Competition Act gives the commission broad powers to review mergers and acquisitions based on factors it deems relevant. Section 13 of our rules on merger procedures further provides the trigger when this moto proprio review may be exercised. That is when the PCC has reasonable grounds to believe that the transaction is likely to substantially prevent, restrict, or lessen competition in the market. As an update on this and in the exercise of our authority, the Commission and Bank has directed its Mergers and Acquisitions Office, the unit under the PCC, which conducts merger review, to make an initial assessment of whether the transaction is likely to substantially prevent, restrict, or lessen competition, and as such, whether the Commission has reasonable grounds to initiate a moto proprio review. Note that these reasonable grounds is the legal standard by which we can initiate a moto proprio review. And therefore, it is important that we get a report and a recommendation that the Commission and Bank can act upon based on the initial assessment of our mergers and acquisition, acquisitions office. Now, suppose either the parties voluntarily notify or the commission undertakes a moto proprio review of the transaction, what will we be looking at? Well, as Congressman Marcoletta mentioned earlier, we will be looking at whether the transaction has the object or effect, or in more common terms, layman terms, is likely to substantially lessen competition. Now, we look at, from a competition perspective, Two dimensions. These two dimensions are first, are the parties competitors? Are they operating in the same segment of the value chain? And if they are, what these markets are, what these lines of businesses in which the acquiring and acquired entities compete, and whether the resulting concentration of market shares in these markets will cause a substantial lessening of competition. So we have had an initial look at the lines of businesses that may indicate a potential competition or overlap between ABS-CBN and TV5. And uh, we noted that whereas TV5, prior to the investment agreement and prior to the operationalization of that investment agreement, is also involved in content production and content distribution and programming this overlaps with ABS-CBN and its subsidiaries' main business now of content production, development, distribution, and programming. This may involve entertainment shows, talk shows, documentaries, news, and films. Now, there is a parallel transaction involving signals acquisition of Sky Cable. And we all know that the parent companies of these two companies are also the companies involved in the transaction under review by the committee today. Now, moving on, the second dimension that we examine from a competition perspective is apart from the segments in the value chain where these entities may be competing, we also look at whether or not they are actually suppliers and consumers for certain products. Meaning, do they have a vertical relationship such that the inputs of one entity are derived from the output of the other entity? 
So in this kind of relationship, we look at the vertical effects of that kind of input and output relationship. If ABS-CBN is a content developer, will its output in terms of content and shows and all that now be limited to TV5 under the investment agreement? Will it now no longer be available in the other media platforms through which they were previously viewed, whether these are in traditional media or in social media platforms? And therefore, if this is going to happen, will there be less choice for consumers to view these programs? And part of the competition considerations is to ensure that consumer welfare is not prejudiced by any transaction that comes before the review of the commission. Now, is it also possible that this content by being provided to TV5 will now allow TV5 to compete more effectively against incumbents in the TV and radio broadcasting space? When ABS-CBN was closed in 2020, its other competitor in the market for TV and radio broadcasting, GMA7, assumed dominance of the broadcasting services industry. Why do we say this? Well, when ABS-CBN and GMA7 were both operating, they had between 35 to 40% of the market share each for TV and radio broadcasting or at the very least for TV broadcasting. When ABS-CBN was shut down, there was a diversion of those who patronized and used ABS-CBN. There was a diversion in favor of GMA-7 such that the market share of GMA-7, depending on the entities which were reviewing market share analysis for this sector, ranged from 53.6% to 65%. So using the presumptive evidence that we can accord to such percentages, as far as we are concerned, GMA7 became the dominant incumbent in so far as TV and broadcasting, TV and radio broadcasting services are concerned. Now, with ABS-CBN buying into TV5 and providing the content that TV5 apparently needs, would TV5 now be able to impose a competitive pressure on GMA7's dominance such that it effectively fosters competition in the market? These are considerations that we have to look into. And the parallel transaction involving the acquisition of shares by Signal and Sky Cable, apart from having its own impact on competition within the market for cable TV or satellite TV, in and of itself adds further complications to the examination of the impact on competition of ABS-CBN's investment in TV5. Now, as I said earlier, these are questions which we will have to address in the context of a review, whether triggered by a voluntary notification by the parties or by the commission moto proprio exercising its initiative or power to conduct reviews of mergers which may have an impact on competition. We cannot answer these questions and issues now. To do so would be premature. We would have to do economic analysis, market analysis, and examine the legal, commercial, and economic context in which these parties operate in able to be in a position to make findings and conclude on whether or not the transaction will substantially lessen competition in the market. Now, a question is raised by some on whether the first issue on non-notification to the PCC of the acquisition is a ground for the transaction's prohibition and cancellation. I can only point to section 17 of the Philippine Competition Act, where it says that agreements consummated in violation of the requirement to notify where they are so required 
will result in the, in the agreement being considered void and the party subject to an administrative fine of between 1% to 5% of the value of the transaction. However, as I mentioned earlier, at least based on a pre preliminary evaluation by our mergers and acquisitions office, the transaction does not seem to be notifiable. Now, at the end point, if we conduct a review and it so happens that we find that the transaction substantially lessens competition in the market, what can the PCC do? First, under the law, we can prohibit the transaction. Alternatively, we can also subject the transaction to conditions to remedy the effect on competition in the market, the negative effect on competition in the market. And in this case, parties can also come forward and voluntarily offer commitments, as we call them, to remedy that anti-competitive impact. Again, to emphasize, the parties have not contacted the PCC about this deal. We do not have a copy of the investment agreement and we are basing what we are initially presenting before the commission on publicly available data and the information that we have called as part of our initial assessment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner uh, Bernabe. So now we proceed. Uh, that's the third uh, resource person. So we now can proceed to the interpretation. Meron na po lima nagparista. The Honorable Marcoleta, then followed by the Honorable Lagman, then followed by the Honorable Tevez, then the Honorable Bar Vice Chair Barsaga, and the Honorable Anthony Gores. Kung meron po magpaparista, Please inform the secretary. The chair recognizes the honorable chairman, uh, Con Congressman Lagman. Uh, we, we have a copy, your honors, and we will furnish this to the honorable committee, your honors. I think the committee should have, the joint committee should have been furnished uh, well ahead of this uh, memorandum because the memorandum is only a one page memorandum. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Commissioner? Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, your honors, it's a one page memorandum. And it is uh, signed solely by the by Commissioner Cordoba. Is that correct? <clears throat> that is correct, your honors. Uh -huh. And uh, maybe you know what is the date of this uh, <clears throat> uh, memorandum order? Um, your honors, it's uh, Mr. Chairman, it's dated uh, 23 June 2022. Why is it that until now it has appeared in the website of the commission? Uh, actually, Your Honours, what we did was uh, we sent it to all the um, broadcasters by email, Your Honours, and furnished also to the KBP. Okay. Uh, that is now, the uh, industry, uh, industry organization of uh, all broadcasters in the Philippines, Your Honours. May we know, Mr. Commissioner, if there is any law, decree, or ordinance which would disqualify <coughs> a person, whether natural or juridical, from entering into a contract simply because it has so-called outstanding obligations with the government? Actually, Your Honours, um, uh, the, the reason why we, we uh, issued this memorandum is to enforce compliance of uh, obligations of existing entities. Uh, because, Your Honour, I, I believe, for example, uh, when you talk about the sale of uh, real property, the register of deeds will not will not uh, register the transfer of the property if the uh, real property taxes are not paid and uh, the owner of the property has does not is not able to get uh, clearance from the bureau of internal revenue so to enforce compliance po with the payment of uh, taxes and other obligations of uh, entities and to help the national government considering that uh, there is a need for uh, a collection especially because of covid Kaya po we uh, issued this memorandum order, Your Honor. Uh, the Honorable Marcoleta is recognized for his, for his second round. Salamat, Mr. Chair. You have the floor, sir. Kay ano muna, kay NTC Commissioner uh, Cordoba, Mr. Chair. Proceed. 
Commissioner Cordoba, kanina po, uh, you were asked by Congressman Lagman <coughs> of uh, several questions like uh, whether or not you know certain uh, laws that prohibit uh, parties from commencing any contract uh, prior to uh, an undertaking of uh, settling all obligations. Is it not true, uh, Mr. Commissioner, that there are statutes uh, which are uh, embedded in the body of laws uh, that will uh, sustain uh, an answer to his question that uh, until and unless obligations are fulfilled, contracts uh, can be prohibited or can uh, even be stopped, like uh, contracts in uh, contracts of loan. There are obligations of, of uh, some of the parties that need to be uh, complied with before a contract of loan can uh, can materialize, isn't it, uh, Mr. Commissioner? Ah uh, yes, there are mga conditions that especially contract of, a contract of purchase. Uh, there are obligations also before a party can complete the transaction. Uh, Even in the contract of marriage, there are obligations that need to be complied with. Uh, in other words, uh, certain obligations uh, are mandated in laws scattered in our judicial system that can be cited to support the memorandum that you cited earlier, Mr. Commissioner, just, just for your uh, uh, reference. Actually, uh, uh, may I uh, respond, Your Honors? Actually po, ang nakikita ko nga pong uh, magandang halimbawa, uh, Mr. Chair, is that if you enter into a contract for the sale of real property, uh, the, the transfer of the, of the property will not be uh, registered by the Register of Deeds unless you give a clearance from the um, city assessor's office or sa local government unit that the real property tax has been paid for that property. That's just that one example. Correct. That is correct, Mr. Commissioner. Even a contract of mortgage, there are obligations. A contract of transport, there are obligations. Even uh, in, in simple life, uh, there, there are several uh, undertakings and arrangements that obligations are necessary to be complied with. Th this is supposed to be uh, uh, the case. Uh, and this is probably the basis why you uh, made uh, or you executed a, uh, a memorandum order in order for uh, some errant uh, parties uh, who, do, who, does, who do not intend to comply with obligations prior to undertaking new obligations. Uh, you also responded to the question of the Honorable Franz Castro uh, asking for your opinion whether or not TB5 may have violated this franchise. And in your opinion, in your opinion, which does not bind this committee, Mr. NTC Commissioner, TB5 has not violated. Is that your is that your answer? Um actually, Your Honors, uh, it's a conditional ano po, answer because we have not uh, uh, read the full uh, uh what's this, the full uh, investment agreement between the parties because what was furnished our office is just a redacted copy or honors. Because, uh, Mr. Commissioner, easily I can tell you that in Congress, the approval of a franchise is always assumed on uh, three bases. Uh, one is technical competence, financial competence, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, administrative competence, uh, sort of uh, these, these requirements. If financial competence is uh, is not there, you will see that the, the franchise will not be approved. As a matter of fact, uh, I recall, and maybe the, you, you're familiar with the uh, presidential decree 576-A, that particular presidential decree, Mr. Commissioner, provides that uh, a registration or no registration or television network may be given a franchise unless it has sufficient capital. Do you, do you recall that? Uh, yes, Your Honor. That's a, that's a condition, Your Honor. Actually, po, sa amin po, in our office, uh, we cannot give an authority if uh, hindi po na, na reach yung 70-30 na debt equity ratio, Your Honor. So uh, a franchisee should have a, 
30% equity bago po namin bigyan ng license. That is what I am saying. So again, uh, that is a uh, already a uh, some semblance of uh, I would say weakness or violation on the part of TB5 because it in in his applic in their application for for uh, franchise the, the technical uh, financial and managerial competence were assumed by the uh, by by congress based on the evidence and documents that they have submitted now we are putting into question the financial capability now uh, mr commissioner mr chair because of the sizable and substantial acquisition uh, that represents about 35% of the outstanding capital stock of TB5. Uh, is it, can we now assume that uh, financially uh, uh, TB5 is no longer in a position to support its franchise? That is one uh, issue that you should look into, uh, Mr. Commissioner, considering that you are the regulatory agency that is supposed to be interested in this particular issue. Because uh, based on uh, publicly available documents as cited by uh, the commissioner from the Philippine Competition Commission, uh, I have read a, uh, a press statement of ABS-CB and Mr. Commissioner, which says that the proceeds of the subscription in the is the primary or in the primary common shares and the convertible note in the total amount of 4 billion pesos will fund the capital expenditures and operating expenses of TB5. This will put uh, TB5 in bad light and it is an admission that they have now a financial weak weakness. That is why they are asking for uh, uh, investment. Again, uh, this, these are, I, I, I would say, uh, manifestations of uh, some problems in so far as, uh, or doubts in so far as the competence, financial competence of TB5 is concerned. You will note, Mr. Uh, Commissioner, that uh, TB5, uh, the, the parent company of TB5 is Media Quest. And, and I think you are uh, in a position to know that TB uh, Media Quest is, uh, is a conglomerate that is, uh, uh, that is owned by PLDT Beneficial Trust Fund. M meaning to say this trust fund are the ones being utilized, this pension fund is being utilized to acquire media outfits or interest in media outfits. You should look into also uh, into uh, the issue on whether or not uh, pension funds, Mr. Commissioner, can be, uh, can be utilized for other purposes, much less in acquiring assets of uh, existing uh, media outfits. We will have to look into whether or not this funding are coming from Filipino citizens, considering the very strict uh, provisions of law in the acquisition of uh, or in the management and ownership of media outfits. This is one, something that we will have to look into. Again, I will, I will emphasize that the obligations you, uh, that you have uh, been citing a while ago are still not complete because I have cited a lot of uh, violations that have been established during the last hearing. And I think I will be in a position to furnish you uh, some of the details so that I think it is not too late for you to be able to run after uh, the airing network, considering that these violations uh, have been established. Uh, Mr. Chair, I will, I will go to uh, the, uh, the lawyer of uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission for a, for a short question, if he's still there. Please proceed, uh, Attorney Padilla of FCC. Attorney Padilla. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, there are some questions raised on the second round by the Honorable Marcoreta. Attorney Padilla, first of all, I'd like to thank you for uh, your participation and uh, 
the quite uh, substantial infor information, even if uh, you were just basing it on uh, some uh, summarized documents that was furnished you, including the redacted uh, copy of an investment uh, agreement. My question is, um, uh, would, you, would you allow or would you accept formally a redacted copy of the investment agreement submitted to you? Uh, sir, actually, we were just, uh, Your Honor, we were actually earlier uh, discussing with the director of the Markets and uh, Market Securities Regulation Department, which is a department tasked to oversee and regulate uh, publicly listed companies. And we have already, uh, we are already in the direction of requiring uh, or directing abs -CBN to furnish us with the non-reductive copy of the agreement, Your Honor. Yeah, thank you. Because uh, as, as the uh, sentinel of securities uh, in this country, you're supposed to be guarding against any possible uh, misrepresentation in all the documents being submitted to you. And I, uh, I hope you will not allow yourselves to be, uh, be recipients of a redacted copy which means that they are not trying to uh, give you the, the entire uh, uh, body of uh, information that you're supposed to get. They are uh, uh, hiding from you some basic and uh, critical information from which you will base your, your responsibility in replying to the mandate uh, as already asked of you by, by, uh, by, by Congress. So, is that a sign that, uh, or will, will you, uh, will you think that, given the uh, secrecy or the alleged secrecy that they uh, argue, uh, Congress will not be able to get a copy from them, uh, Attorney Padilla, considering that uh, to them that is a very sacred document that not even the Securities and Exchange Commission should not get the entire uh, unabridged copy. Uh, Your Honor, my, my personal position is that, uh, that the government, including from Congress and even the SEC, can, can compel uh, regulated entities to, to submit documents, especially if the same is uh, uh, required to uh, perform the respective mandates, Your Honor. That is why, uh, uh, Attorney, uh, these this, uh, this big networks uh, are always emphasizing transparency and accountability. They're talking about free press. They're talking about press freedom. But here you are, you are unable to get the kind of copy that you deserve. It is as if that they are uh, uh, marking the, the, the authority of the Securities and Exchange Commission. I hope Congress will be able to give a copy, a complete copy. And if they, uh, if they do that, I assure you, we will give you a, a copy, the same copy that it will furnish the House of Representatives. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney. Uh, Mr. Chair, I will go to, uh, uh, I will go back to the Commissioner of Philippine Competition Commission. Please proceed, you still have the floor. The uh, Attorney Bernabe. Yes, Sir, Your Honor. Uh, Tony Bernabe, I, I beg your indulgence. Uh, I, I know it's, uh, it's late in the afternoon already and you have so much work, but uh, it's, it's just, it, it, I am disturbed by the fact that, uh, of course, there are two conflicting uh, laws here that we are uh, invoking. Uh, we're invoking uh, by any hand two insofar as the uh, 50 billion threshold is concerned which appears to have uh, uh, override the Section 17 of the Philippine uh, Competition Act, is it not? <laughs> uh, but but uh, will you not bother to agree with me, uh, Commissioner, that uh, considering that Bayanihan 2 was legislated in the environment of a pandemic, meaning to say it is a recovery act, which, uh, of course, um, uh, was legislated in order for uh, for our country to go, to recover from uh, 
the debilitating effect of the pandemic as soon as we can, so that we needed uh, the most that we can get, the, uh, in, including uh, uh, putting a uh, 50 billion uh, threshold uh, in order uh, for the commission uh, competition uh, not to look into, uh, meaning to say below that, uh, it is exempted. But section 17, if I go back to that, that is uh, the threshold when we talk about competition per se, where, where the Philippine Competition Commission is working in the context of promoting uh, the consumer's welfare. While uh, Bayanihan uh, too was working in the context of securing uh, our people because we need to recover as much as we can because of the effect of the pandemic. I, I'd like to submit to, uh, a, um, to an opinion that maybe considering that this case is not about recovery, it, it's about a business deal, it's about an investment and the primordial concern here is to be able to serve the consumer. It's not about recovery. Uh, this, this investment, this reducted investment agreement, which was supplied by, to the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, which is not yet uh, obtained by your office, not even the House of Representatives, is not about recovery, uh, Commissioner. So don't you think that... Uh, uh, for for uh, the, the greater purpose and, and, and within the meaning and mandate of competition, uh, the one billion is supposed to be the threshold. Uh, thank you for that um, perspective, Your Honor. Uh, what I can say is that when deliberations were ongoing with regard to Section 4 Triple E of Bayanihan 2, the Competition Commission interposed an objection against this increase, even temporarily, for notification thresholds to be set at 50 billion. Our position was premised on the fact that many transactions which harm the economy actually occur within the range of 5 billion to 10 billion, not at that amount of 50 billion. But of course, the wisdom of the Congress, which you represent, prevailed. And I must, uh, I'm afraid, submit to the principle of Dura Lex said Lex, that while the law may be hard, it is still the law. And we would be running afoul of the law if we submit our own interpretation of what you legislated and disobey the explicit mandate under Section 4 Triple E of Bayanihan 2. But having said that, Your Honor, it is not as if the implementation of Section 4 Triple E, which is not to require notification on a mandatory basis, deprives the Commission of an opportunity to review. I must emphasize that we can review the transaction on a moto proprio basis, or if the parties voluntarily notify their transaction to the Commission. That is what I'm trying to uh, emphasize, uh, Mr. Commissioner, because even if uh, uh, Bayanihan II may have over, uh, overrode uh, Section 17 of your own charter, it seems to me that the overriding uh, or the more, the more significant aspect of your job now is to be able to safeguard and to look into the welfare of the consumers. Let us not belabor the notification issue but let us go ahead into the meat and to uh, the, the the very uh, or the the the, cent the center of uh, uh, I would say the very objective why we are uh, having this uh, hearing uh, today uh, to see to it that uh, competition is not stifled to see to it that competition uh, meaning to say. Uh, uh, not, not, not harmful competition will, uh, will, will persist, but in the end, it's a competition that is healthy uh, with the object of uh, being able to safeguard the interest of the consuming public. Uh, this, this is uh, what I'm trying to emphasize to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair.
very much, Mr. Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Agman. Mr. Chair. Yes, Honorable uh, Barcoreta. May I have a rejoinder, Mr. Chair? I'll address uh, the NTC Commissioner. Yes, yes indeed. Honorable Margareta, you have the floor. Mr. Commissioner, when you ask, uh, when we were asked questions from uh, the Honorable Lagman, you were answering in, the cap in your capacity as uh, the Commissioner of the NTC, is that correct? Uh, actually, Your Honor, I was answering as a lawyer, Your Honor, because the questions are general principles of law. Yes, but uh, you are also answering in the context as uh, the chair, uh, the commissioner of the National Telecommunications Commission. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Because as a regulator, it is also your duty to look into the the uh, uh, the best interest uh, of the parties, which are guarded, which are not guarded, because uh, it's it's not uh, it's like two parties without uh, the uh, participation of a regulator, like a like uh, uh, a seller and the buyer or the contracting parties to a marriage. You are a regulator. Uh, you, you're representing the National Telecommunications Commission. That's why you're after the obligations of each parties. For example, in the, uh, in the uh, extrajudicial settlement, uh, Mr. Commissioner, of course, before uh, the uh, extrajudicial uh, settlement is approved, the, the uh, existing debts of the decedent uh, mm -hmm. or the uh, of the estate is first to be uh, settled. This is not, uh, Mr. Uh, NTC Commissioner. Um, yes, Your Honor. Uh, actually, Your Honor, can I can I add some more details to the answer? Okay. Uh, actually, Your Honor, the reason why we uh, issued this memorandum order is because um, the 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 franchises, aside from being given a franchise by Congress, is also being uh, given the privilege by the national government to use the uh, frequencies, which is owned by uh, the national government. So if uh, they are given that privilege to uh, uh, use such frequencies for commercial purposes, then uh, it is our position that the national government, uh, in this case represented by the NTC, can uh, give conditions to uh, contracts entered into by franchises and who are given uh, frequencies by the national government, your honors. Thank you. Can I go now back to uh, the NTC, uh, the, uh, the commissioner of uh, the PCC, Mr. Chair? Proceed, please. Please proceed. Commissioner uh, Bernabe, are you still there? Yes, he, your honor. He's still here. Uh, when I made uh, the submission uh, between uh, uh, Bayanihan 2, uh, Section 4, uh, EEE, in juxtaposition with Section 17 of PCC, did you get the idea that I was uh, uh, trying to ask you not to belabor on uh, on the exacting provisions of uh, uh, Bayanihan II, considering that it was enacted in the uh, in the context of uh, of uh, the pandemic, but uh, maybe to concentrate on the mandate and uh, uh, the mandate of the PCC, which is supposed to be to safeguard and look after the interest of uh, the consumers which means I was only asking your opinion that between the two uh, laws, even if there is no conflict there, but the overriding idea is not to be labeled between the two laws, but concentrate on the very aspect of competition that, is, that will be more harmful if not, uh, not taken uh, as in this, in this particular case. That, that is so the idea that I, that I was trying to convey, Mr. Commissioner, if you get the idea, but not really to conflict the two cases or the two laws uh, for you to answer. Did, did you get that idea, Mr. Commissioner? When I took your entire statement, uh, Your Honor, 
at the conclusion, I was clear in the understanding that what you wanted us to do was to exercise our power to review the transaction. And such power to review is distinct and separate from the power to, re to require notification. The power Wait. to require notification is what is amended by section 4 triple E of Bayanihan 2. But the power to review is not amended. And that subsists regardless of Bayanihan 2. And that is my takeaway from uh, understanding in whole your earlier uh, discourse uh, with this representation, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, also, I assume that Congressman, uh, when, when Congressman Lagman read his letter to the speaker, I assume that uh, you, uh, you have understood that completely. You have heard some of the points that uh, like, like in, uh, in one of uh, the points that he raised in his letter, I think uh, he was telling that the agreement or the investment between ABS, CBN, and TB5 is not a merger, neither uh, a consolidation. Uh, and that is why it is not subject to uh, uh, the review of the competition uh, commission. Uh, I think that was the gist of, uh, of uh, his letter. And uh, aside from that, he said that uh, the franchise of TB5 was not uh, violated because that is not a uh, merger. It's uh, a simple partnership and an investment. But did I hear you right when you said that uh, uh, the substantial uh, acquisition of the outstanding uh, stocks of ABS-CBN to you uh, had the character of an acquisition? Did, did I hear you, did you right say that? If I may clarify, Your Honor, Mr. Chair, I think uh, the Honorable Congressman Edsel Lagman made two points in his letter uh, to uh, the Honorable Speaker. The first is that the deal is not a merger. And I think on that point, uh, we agree with uh, Congressman Lagman. The second point that Congressman Lagman made in his letter is that it is not an acquisition as defined in section four of the PCA. And I understand that his premise for this is because an acquisition as defined must be for the purpose of obtaining control. Now, uh, the determination of control is provided for in the PCA as well. It is in the form of an illustrative list of factors that the commission has to consider. Now, it may be that while there is a presumption that, a, that control is being acquired if you acquire more than 50% of the voting shares of an entity, there are other factors that you can consider as a commission when determining the existence of control and therefore a categorization that a transaction is an acquisition. It is a, an examination of these other factors which might manifest badges of control that I was referring to when I said that at least in my own opinion, this transaction would qualify as an acquisition. Now, I do not want to preempt the opinion of my other colleagues in the commission. We are a collegial body, your honor, and they may have their own appreciation of whether or not the transaction manifests badges of acquisition of control, which would qualify it as an acquisition. But to my mind, at least personally, there seems to be indications that this qualifies as an acquisition. Now, uh, we do not have a copy of the investment agreement. We, what we have are uh, the press release from the parties. What we have are the uh, interventions, the, no the notes we have made out of the interventions uh, propounded earlier. And from what has been stated, 
it would seem that this qualifies to my mind as an acquisition. But just to clarify whether or not it is an acquisition which necessitates notification, that is something which I demur from categorically stating because I don't think it is an acquisition which is required to be mandatorily notified, Your Honor. Thank you for that answer, uh, Mr. Commissioner. And uh, in characterizing that it is, uh, in your opinion, an acquisition, it is based on Section 25 of uh, the Charter of uh, PCC. Is that correct? The application thereof, yes, Your Honor. Yes. And, and so uh, you're, you're correct there. I, I think your opinion uh, jives with uh, my own. Because, because I believe that even if we do not technically classify it as an acquisition, but the budgets or signages of, of control might be there, like the circumstances or situations uh, listed under Section 25 of uh, the Philippine Competition Law is, is something that you should uh, be looking into in the future, uh, Mr. Commissioner. And do you believe that... Uh, in reviewing section 10 of uh, the franchise of TB5. Because I believe the, the term merger as utilized in section five of that franchise was used uh, in this generic uh, sense. Be because if you will review section 10, and I think you did already, the substantial acquisition of uh, outstanding stocks of TB5 had the effect of uh, giving uh, to ABS-CBN uh, the, the exercise of the rights and privileges that, uh, that are prohibited under that particular section of the franchise of TV5. Considering that uh, the enjoyment of the rights and privileges, more particularly the uh, production of content, which is something that can control the entire uh, operation of TV5, uh, that, is, that is supposed to be uh, with prior uh, approval of Congress. The, the, that was the point that I was trying to, uh, to raise in the privileged speech, uh, Mr. Commissioner. That is why even if the, my friend, my uh, good friend and uh, colleague, Congressman Lagman will technically say that, is, that there is no merger, there is no consolidation, but in the context of control, uh, as, we, as we have been discussing, and as you have elicited, this is really uh, something that this, uh, the, the Competition Commission should look into and uh, guard against because you exist for the interest of uh, the consumers, Mr. Commissioner. That is all, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner.